So a lot of people in my channel are very interested in becoming engineers, and I, I wonder why that is. Beats me. So today I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't go into engineering. People always tell you about all the good things, the money, the cars, the clothes. I want the money, money and the cars, cars and the clothes. You know, the song by the Canadian rapper Drake. Uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about none of those things, and we're going to be telling you what sucks about an engineering degree, and common things people will tell you to not get an engineering degree. So, one discovery that I recently made that really kind of shifted my view of engineering was that 75% of engineers don't end up working in engineering at all. I made an entire video covering this topic, so if you want to see that, go check it out. Only 25% of engineers actually work in engineering, the other 50% work in a different STEM or other field, and 25% are underemployed, which means they're underutilizing the engineering degree that they gained. So in order to prevent this from happening to you, be sure that you really, really, really want to go into engineering. Two, don't just go to school. If you go to engineering school, you go to university, you go to college, and you're doing engineering, you can't just sit in class and expect to get a job at the end of it. That's not how things work nowadays. You have to get the extracurriculars, do projects outside of class, show the employers that you have skills that they want, because going to class, reading the textbooks, and doing the, the quizzes doesn't really help. It's good to have that base knowledge from the classroom, but outside of that, you really need to build up your own skills. Getting a job in engineering can be extremely competitive, so if you're not willing to compete with hundreds of other people for the same job, then maybe don't go into engineering. Because no matter what job you apply to, there will be hundreds of similar applicants to you. So you have to figure out a way to make yourself stand out so that the employer actually reads what's on your resume and your cover letter. And that kind of just comes down to strategic stuff. You just have to be strategic about the way you write your resume and cover letter, strategic about the skills and experiences that you put on it. But if you're not willing to put in the time and effort that it takes to get a job or an internship, then you probably won't be getting one. And that's just the unfortunate hard truth. Some people, when they go into engineering, think that it will be exactly like it was in high school. And let me tell you, it won't be. It's going to suck. You're going to have to grind really hard. It's going to be way more difficult than you probably anticipated. Your grades are probably going to take a hit. So you have to prepare for all of those things. You have to be like in the right mental headspace to kind of take on new challenges. There are definitely strategies out there. I've had horrible semesters, but I've also had amazing semesters where I got all A's. So there are strategies that you can definitely use to try to improve and to get better. And as you go on, you will probably slowly increase your GPA. Now at the very end of the day, GPA does not really matter that much. You can get the internships with experience. It's been proven that experience and projects matter way more than a high GPA. And once you graduate and it's two or three years out after graduation, unless you're planning on going to grad school, your GPA doesn't really matter. It's the skills, the, per the people that you've worked for, and all of your experiences that start to matter a lot more. And you can kind of just remove GPA off of your resume. So. Don't worry too much about it if you are having a hard time or if you are going to have a hard time in engineering because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter all that much and as long as you get your foot in the door somewhere, you can eventually move forward, move up, and that's kind of just how life works. But if you want to go to grad school, GPA does matter and if you don't want to go to grad school, nobody tells you that it doesn't matter, which honestly isn't the worst thing in the world because like you do want to learn the things that you're supposed to be learning while in class, but if you could spend your time doing a project or going to class, do the project, you'll probably get a job. Now, I'm personally in a degree called mechatronics engineering. I've also made a ton of videos on that. And I've heard arguments that are something along the lines of, oh, people have no idea what your degree is, so you won't get a job. And this is just purely not true. Because if you Google mechatronics engineering jobs, there are literally hundreds that come up. So I don't know what people are talking about, but there is definitely demand for pretty much any degree that you're in. You are just going to have to compete and you're going to have to prove that you are the better engineer and then you'll get hired. 
here's another problem with that argument is that it doesn't really matter if like mom and dad or or an electrical or computer engineer don't really understand what your degree is so long as the person hiring understands what the degree is and sometimes people hiring don't even care what your degree is they care what experience you have relating to the job that you're going to be doing it's all about what can you bring to the table and do you have the experience to do the job that you need to do. Otherwise, the degree doesn't matter so much. So just some final thoughts here. Um, you'll often have people telling you that mechatronics or some other types of engineering fields will make you a jack of all trades and a master of none. And this argument, I don't know where this argument came from, but it's a really bad argument because the whole point of going to university is to gain a wide array of knowledge. And I don't know if you notice, but when you go to university, you will be taking lots of courses that are completely useless, that you will never use, that don't help you on the job, that don't do anything except shove more knowledge into your brain. So this argument makes no sense to me. And sometimes the best example I can think of is that if you were to do a job like to be an FPGA engineer, and if you don't know what an FPGA is, it looks something like this. And essentially it's a programmable board and you learn how to use a programming language called Verilog and you can basically make the pins inside of the board in, like connect the wires, connect in a certain fashion to perform an operation, okay? So you learn how to use this thing in one, maybe two classes of your entire engineering degree and then it becomes your job. So what about all of the other 46 classes that you will have to take you can't tell me that being that you aren't a jack of all trades regardless of the engineering degree that you're in because most of the time you'll be doing one or two or three tasks that require knowledge from six classes so like yeah you'll need the base knowledge to learn about the advanced classes which is why you get shoved with so much information so that you can learn the base stuff and then work your way up to the top stuff but this argument just makes absolutely no sense that you can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. But point is that that argument doesn't make any sense and that I think people should go into whatever engineering degree that they're really interested in. And of course, like you don't even have to be that interested in it. You have to like one part of the degree because your job won't be like everything that you learned. Like you're not going to have to remember literally everything when you're on the job. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, that was just my little t two cents there when people say, oh, you're a jack of all trades. Well, no, not really. <laughs> like, everybody is. Anyway, so hopefully that helped you out. Don't worry about not specializing. And I think it's good to kind of get a broad knowledge because specializing too early in life can really, like, slow you down. And there has been research proven that people that specialize too early and then go straight into the workforce end up quitting a lot sooner than those who don't. So... I don't know. You tell me whether it's good to be a jack of all trades or not. Um, anyway, that's that. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful, you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did like it, be sure to leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe share it with someone. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next one. One big thing I noticed, I was actually reading this blog, they were really funny. They were like, oh my god, there's no girls in engineering anywhere go to like a different department of the university to try and find like a girlfriend or something because you won't find one in engineering.